Hello, and welcome to CookingInCastIron.com's very first video podcast. We hope over the next few weeks and months to have a number of subjects covered in these podcasts about cooking with cast iron. Today, however, we're going to start at the very beginning, and, and we're going to talk about how to season a cast iron pan. We're going to talk about how to, how to restore a cast iron pan that you might find at a garage sale somewhere that's all rusted out. And, and then most importantly, how to clean a cast iron pan after you've cooked something wonderful in it. Now, I have a number of cast iron pans behind me here, and uh, let, me, let me show you a couple of these. This is, uh, this is an actual unseasoned Lodge cast iron pan. Now, Lodge actually doesn't even sell these anymore unseasoned. I happened to be in a hardware store about a week ago, and I saw this hanging in the, in the store, and it had obviously been there for a number of years. And so I, I, I pulled it down, and I, I went and paid for it. I thought that I paid too much, and sure enough, they have a sticker here for a grill pan and a price tag on it, so I actually, I actually paid for something that I didn't get. But nevertheless, this is a pristine, never before uh, seasoned cast iron, unseasoned cast iron pan. Now, if I can compare this to this pan, this was a pan that I got back in the 90s, and this pan used to be the same color as this one. But you'll see that this one is a nice, shiny black color, and this is the, the goal for any of these cast iron pans in order to create a non-stick cooking surface. The, uh, the cast iron pan that you see right here was my grandmother's cast iron pan, and uh, you'll notice how smooth the surface is, especially compared, compared to the surface of this pan that has never been seasoned. We don't know exactly how old this pan is. It was, uh, my grandmother was 90, almost 90 years old when she died, and uh, so if she had gotten this pan as a teenager, it might very well be over 70 years old. But uh, my, my mother tells me about how my grandmother used to cook cornbread in this cast iron pan, and she would come along after she pulled it out of the oven, and she would flip it, and the cornbread would go through there and she would catch it uh, because it had such a smooth surface in here and it was so non-stick, and that's the goal of every cast iron pan, but that's not how it starts out. So we're going to start with this one, and, and the, one of the rules for cast iron pans, you talk to 9 out of 10 persons who, who cooks in cast iron, and they say, don't wash it with soap. Well, there is one exception to that. And that is the first time that you ever get a cast iron pan when you want to when you want to clean it up. It's very important that you, if it's unseasoned, that you do wash it with soap because it ships from the factory with a light waxy substance that's on it that's preventing it from rusting. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the sink and we're going to we're going to wash this pan with soap and get it real good and clean before we begin the seasoning process. Now, when you, when you buy an unseasoned pan in a store like this, usually the, there's paper stuck on here with some kind of gluey residue. And so you want to make sure that you pay attention to that while you're cleaning. And also, you're going to uh, make sure that you've got, uh, you've got hot water running and you've got a good, strong soap. So we're going to clean this pan. And uh, let me get the camera to come over here closer. And... As I mentioned, this is normally you wouldn't scrub a pan this hard with soap, a cast iron pan, because cast iron pans uh, depend upon this layer of fat and carbon to have a non-stick surface. But the first time you get a pan, if it's never been seasoned, and most of them are nowadays, but if it's never been seasoned, you need to make sure that you get that waxy substance off. And so you want to make sure that you clean it quite well. So after you've washed your pan and you've dried it thoroughly, the next step is to coat it with some type of oily fatty substance. Now, most of the time, uh, what people will, will use uh, these days is they'll use Crisco uh, or they'll use some other kind of oil. I've heard of people using olive oil or canola oil or even peanut oil. However, if you go back to the days 100 years ago, and, and before that, before the days of Crisco, people used basically just lard uh, which is pig fat, in order to, in order to season their pans. And so the, uh, you'll notice that lard, which you can find in any grocery store, you may not have ever even noticed that it's there, but I assure you it's there at your grocery store. Uh, you'll notice that lard looks a lot like Crisco, because Crisco was essentially created to replace lard in food as a healthy, healthier alternative, although it's not all that healthy either. But what we're going to do is we're going to cover every surface of this pan 
with uh, a light coating of lard, and then we're going to cook this in the oven. So I'm going to take I'm going to take a paper towel here, and I'm just putting some of the lard on the paper towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the surface of this pan with this lard. We're just coating every surface of the pan with a light layer of lard. That also includes the back of the pan. Because, you know, the other thing that this does besides creating a non-stick surface in the, on the side that you're cooking on is for the rest of the pan, it creates protection from rust because cast iron is a substance that will highly oxidize. In other words, it'll, it's very prone to rust. Notice that I'm getting the smaller handle out here. And then I'm even going to I'm even going to oil the handle that you hold it onto with. Notice that I've lined my oven, uh, the, the bottom rack of it, with aluminum foil. You need to do this in order to catch the oil that drips off of the pan so that it doesn't, it doesn't make a mess in the bottom of your oven. Some uh, instructions that you read will talk about putting cookie sheets down or something like that, but then you're going to have to clean burnt oil on, off of the cookie sheets. So we're going to take, we're going to take the pan, we're going to put it upside down, you put it upside down so that no oil pools within the pan, and we're going to set the oven for 350 degrees. Now before I, before I turn the oven on and season this pan, let's talk about uh, restoring a pan that you might pick up at a garage sale. This is a pan uh, that a uh, friend handed to me and asked me if I could, I could fix it. It was something that he and his wife had gotten for, uh, I think, for a wedding gift, and they had never used. And uh, it's got quite a bit of rust on it. You can see where it's set in a, a cabinet, and another pan set in it. And because this pan, uh, I don't believe this pan had ever been seasoned. It's a little bit darker than the one that we had a while ago, so it, it could be that someone tried to season it, but I don't believe so. There's a lot of rust on the bottom where it had moisture underneath it and it's rusted out and so a cast iron pan that's like this that has a little bit of rust on it is not ruined. Uh, this is very fixable and uh, you can, you can, you can uh, fix this up to where it's never going to, uh, to need to, to have the rust scrubbed out again if it's treated well. Now I'm going to be cleaning this with steel wool to get that rust out. One thing that you would never do with a cast iron pan is clean it with steel wool because that would ruin your seasoning. If you happen to put, have a seasoned pan that you're having to clean some rust out, out of, uh, keep in mind that, that you're going to ruin the seasoning that's on there, but you're going to have to re-season it anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. We'll turn it over here to the back where it was, it was really bad. Get some of this rust off of it. Notice that it's, it's coming off. And so once we get this rust off, we'll season this one up with lard just like we did the other pan, and we'll put it in the oven. Alright, we've got both skillets in the oven. On the left is the one that I got from the hardware store the other day. On the right is the one that my friend loaned me. He asked me to restore it. So the first one is being seasoned. The one on the left is being seasoned for the very first time. The one on the right may have been seasoned before, probably not, but we've got the rust scrubbed off of it, and so now we're going to begin the process. Now, different people have different methods, but what I do is I start with a cold oven, and after closing the oven, I set the oven to bake on 350 degrees. And I let it sit there, I let the, the pans uh, sit there with the, uh, uh, as the oven is heating up so that they slowly will get hot too, and then once once the oven here tells me that it's at 350 degrees, I'm going to set a timer for one hour. And once that one hour is over, I'm still not going to take the pans out. I'm going to let them stay in there a few hours while they cool down slowly. So they're going to, they're going to slowly heat up, they're going to cook at 350 degrees for an hour, and then they're going to slowly cool down. Alright, first we have the, uh, the skillet that I got in the hardware store, and it looks like it's seasoned up fairly well. And then we also have this skillet that was a friend of mine's and uh, it looks well itself. Now when you when you do this you'll notice that they're not black, they're not black like my skillet yet. That's going to take a number of cookings. 
but really at this point they're ready to go. They're ready to use. You don't have a perfect non-stick surface yet. That will take time to build, but you're on your way. You're ready to cook with them at this point. And if you aren't satisfied with the color because it's kind of a brownish, put them back in the oven. Put it, put it through this process again, but really the best way to do it is to cook to cook in the skillets and the best things that you can cook in the skillet right now if you want to achieve a darker surface cook things that are heavy and old, cook bacon cook breads uh, in the oven, bake breads in the oven whether that's a cornbread or, or, or rolls or white bread or anything like that but just so that those pores can start to fill up and so that you can start to burn that layer of carbon if you, if you come out, if you bring a pan out and there's a little bit of oil that's kind of caked on it you can just kind of smooth that out or wipe that off with a cloth, but uh, again, if it's if it's a little bit sticky, all you have to do is put it back in the oven for another hour or so. It's certainly not going to hurt it, and uh, then you're ready to go. So what we've talked about so far, we've talked about seasoning a brand new skillet. We've talked about repairing a skillet that you might find at a garage sale or maybe one that's sitting in your cabinet that's got rust on it. But but what do you what do you do with a skillet that has an actual physical imperfection? I have a skillet here that has never been used and there's actually a physical imperfection in it. Uh, it has a pit and I'll let the camera zoom in real close here and I'll try to draw a circle around it. I, I don't know if you can see how well you can see that or not, but there's an actual pit within the skillet and I got this from the Lodge, um, the Lodge outlet store in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Now this is a skillet that Lodge would never sell in the store. They would never sell it through Amazon.com. This is strictly sold as what's called a second because of the physical imperfection in it. And, and they had a whole room full of seconds, and, and a lot of these, a lot of these seconds, uh, you know, they might have some of the pre-seasoning that got messed up, or they might have a, a physical uh, problem like this, this pit here. And so the question is, does that ruin the skillet? The answer to that is absolutely not. Uh, this can be fully repaired simply by cooking it. And so we're going to demonstrate that uh, next: how to repair a skillet that has a physical imperfection in it. And, and this is something, you know, you might see in an outlet store, you might see as a second. This cost us $3.99, and it's a great way to get a very good quality skillet. And once we're through with it, you're not even going to know that that pit's there anymore. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is we want to fill that pit. It's like a cavity on a tooth. We, you need to put a filling in it. So that's what we're wanting to do. So the first thing that we're doing is we're just cooking some bacon. We're cooking some bacon onto the uh, onto the bottom of the pan, and I'm using a press to give it a little bit of an extra force. Now we're going to come back in a later podcast, and we're going to have a podcast devoted entirely to cooking with a press. But for right now, I'm just using that to really put that bacon solidly down there on the surface of this pan, and our goal is to, to fill that pit. And this is this is step one. The next step after this is we're going to after we cook this bacon, then we're going to cook some cornbread in this pan and cook it in the oven. Okay, so we finished cooking the bacon, and, and then I did something that normally I would never do. There was still remnants of that bacon in the bottom of the pan. It should have been cleaned at that point. But what I did was, I left that in the pan, and, and I left the bacon grease in the pan. I put it in the oven at 450 degrees in order to, to let that pan get hot. And, and in order to, to fill that cavity, to fill that pit, we're going to now pour pour cornbread on top of the top of the bacon grease and on top of the uh, the residue of the bacon. One thing that you never want to do is you never want to take a cold pan, put it into a hot oven. You don't want to take a hot pan, put it into cold water. So we've let the oven heat up with the uh, with the pan in there and the bacon grease and the remnants of some of that bacon that we left intact. So I'm gonna pull this pan out. Uh, this pan this pan is not a hundred percent non-stick uh, because it's new, even though it's pre-seasoned, and we're what we're going to do is with putting this cornbread in over it, we've almost guaranteed for it to stick. And, and you can see here, you can see here that we've got you know just a little bit of that remnants of that that bacon there. And so uh, we're going to put this in here. The cornbread will probably still be edible, will still be good. Uh, we're not wanting to put a lot here, but we definitely want to uh, we definitely want to let this cook just like we would make regular cornbread. I'm not putting a lot in. And uh, so we're going to put that in the oven, and we'll come back in about 20 minutes and see what we've got. Okay, so I pulled the cornbread out of the oven, and it's not a lot of cornbread, uh, but just enough to kind of make something there at the bottom. It's cooked on that bacon grease. I don't expect it to slide right out, 
and there, it's sticking a little bit, but I'm loosening that up, and we're going to pull that over here onto this plate, slid it onto the plate, and uh, and then you can see it here, the camera will kind of come in here closely. See that it's stuck there a little bit, but it's not too bad. We're already building, it's, we're already building up that non-stick surface. Of course, this was a pre-season pan, so that helped us. But where's the pit? The pit is smaller. If you look close enough, you can still see it, but you can see where it's starting to fill in. And with just two or three more uses, just in this manner that we've done today, with cooking bacon and then cooking cornbread, that pit's going to completely fill in. And this pan's going to be like any other pan that you pay $15 or $20 for in the store. But a pan like this will cost you around $5 or so because it has a mild defect. But a defect doesn't mean that it's not usable, not as good as any other pan. Uh, it absolutely is. Now, with this pan, like this, a little bit dirty, we're going to move to the next stage of our video podcast, we're going to talk about the proper way to clean a cast iron pan. Okay, you always want to you always want to clean a cast iron skillet or a cast iron Dutch oven or any cast iron in hot water, especially if the pan itself is hot. Uh, I always have a, a good brush that I'd use just for my cast iron pan, and I give the pan a good once over with the brush just to see if everything will come out. Now, uh, different people have different ways of cleaning cast iron, but I never use soap in the cast iron, especially a new cast iron pan, because soap can break down that seasoning. If you have an older cast iron pan, one like my grandmother's that's decades old, and you want to use a little bit of mild detergent in that, that will probably be okay. But for these newer pans, it's best to keep soap away from them. Now, if you're worried about, well, is that, is that uh, sanitary to do that? Keep in mind that the next time you cook in this pan, you're going to heat it to at least 350 degrees, and that's going to more than kill any bacteria that might be in the pan. Besides using the brush, I also use a nylon scraper. If anything is stuck on it all, again, the more you use a cast iron pan, the less it'll stick to it, but you occasionally have something that will stick. These little nylon scrapers, you can get, they're made for, for cleaning cooking stones and the like. You can get them from kitchen stores or from a Pampered Chef distributor, but you can take the, you can take the scraper and, and go through the pan uh, just two or three times and, and make sure that there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing above the surface at that point. And so really it wasn't that hard to clean that pan, but we're not through yet. Things you never want to do while you're cleaning a cast iron pan is you, you don't want to put it in the dishwasher at all. You don't want to leave it in a sink for a long period of time because water will get under it. You'll end up with rust on the bottom of your pan. You'll end up with a rust ring in your sink. And you know it's it's one thing. Sometimes what you'll do if you really have cook if you really have stuck food. You can put a little bit of water in the pan, you can let it boil, but you don't want to let water sitting in it for long periods of time because that will cause rust as well. So after you clean it like I just did, bring it over here to the stove. You might want to put it on a burner with some low heat or maybe put it in the oven. Make sure it's completely dry. Once we know it's dry, I usually oil my pans uh, just as a sense to protect it and also to prepare it for its next use. So I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in there, not a lot, but just a little bit of olive oil. and. What I'll do is I'll coat the bottom and the sides, the bottom and the sides of my pan. Now some people will coat the outside of the pan too. I don't, I don't really do that because my main concern is the inside of the pan. That's where I'm creating my non-stick surface. If some of the seasoning starts to come off on the back of the pan, I'll, I'll re-season. But basically what we're doing here is we're just we're preparing it for next use. I use olive oil. Some people use will use other oils, lard. Uh, Crisco, canola oil, or some other kind, but at that point it's ready to use. So we've learned today about seasoning a cast iron pan, we've learned about uh, repairing a cast iron pan, we've learned about cleaning a cast iron pan. I hope this has been beneficial to you. I hope that you'll come back to see future uh, video podcasts that we're going to do, and I hope most importantly that you'll visit cookingincastiron.com for lots of information about cooking in cast iron. Thanks.